event begins. I give you my friend, Mark Jaremko, who, as I said, has been a really good friend of mine for a long time. The last time he did this event, he followed all the rules, did a great job. This time, he whined enough to get me to break loose on a number of them, particularly timing, and we'll see how well he does. So this little box, two years ago, my daughter said, Daddy, you know what I want to be for Halloween? She's four years old. I want to be Darth Vader. Okay? So we built this. And the sole purpose of this was uh, to um, <laughs> provide a Darth Vader breathing sound box for, for, uh, for Halloween. Uh, so uh, I told her, don't lose it. There's $200 worth of makeup process from that. It would be very, very upsetting. But, but it was, uh, she was happy and I was happy. <laughs> you can make things that don't exist before. So I once was fortunate enough to have dinner at the French Laundry. And they kind of served these wonderful little things called cornets. And I had no way to actually hold them. So I made this device, which uh, would actually allow you to put these gnome cone little devices into it. Fortune mine don't look nearly as good as one the French Laundry, but they're, they're, they're still pretty good. Uh, so things like that don't exist. You can make things that are very big. Every Halloween, we kind of take it a little overboard seriously. We kind of dress up the house and do a bunch of things. And so we had 12 people staging a whole toxic waste dump type site. We built all sorts of different things for it. We have electronics, fog machines, strobe lights, you name it. Uh, and we had 1,100 visitors come this period of three hours. Um, it was quite the party. Drop by this year if you're not doing anything that night. <laughs> so, you can also make things uh, that are customized. So my eight-year-old needed a desk to do her homework on. So he said, okay, nothing at Ikea secret at the model. We can build something ourselves. So I took them through, we cut it out on a very big CNC kind of a router, and uh, we're able to actually kind of put something together that uh, 
pin exactly what, to, what we needed it to do. Uh, and less than you could build stuff that nobody wants you to build, like this little device over here. What's really cool about this, now I didn't invent this or conceive of this, but this really puts the word universal in reverse universal remote control. It only has one button, and when you press the button, it'll turn off any television set within a 40-foot range that it's actually pointing at. <laughs> Wonderful fun at Costco's in Best Buy. I don't endorse it. You shouldn't do that, but I've given it to many friends who thought that was just great. Um, very hard to find at your local radio shack. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> So the latest project that I've worked on, which I'll kind of do a step-by-step -step work, kind of show you how I approach that step. A designer architect friend of mine and I were commenting that it's really hard to kind of find modern, sustainably made furniture that is both recyclable that our kids could actually use. So we started thinking, what would it take to actually build an interesting chair? Uh, so we started off by um, making a sketch. Uh, on a piece of paper, and we kind of tossed around some ideas and scanned an email until we found something we liked. And we started putting numbers beside what it, how tall should it be, what's the width, what's the height, uh, and uh, started canning that up to kind of figure out what uh, what would it actually look like. Uh, from there, I actually transferred that and made a 3D model uh, in a program called Autodesk Inventor, or SolidWorks is a similar one, where I actually kind of look and rotate this in 3D space and figure out would it work or not. Uh, from there, we can actually create a set of fabricatable parts. So what are the individual parts that we have to actually make for this thing to, to work? Uh, and the first thought I thought was, all right, well, what's the biggest, most expensive machine that I can actually use to make this? Well, it's this thing over here. It's called the water jet cutter. It's about a quarter million dollars. And it pumps water at 55,000 pounds per square inch. Really cool thing. Uh, it'll cut through six inches of solid steel. So I thought, this would be perfect. So, okay, you don't need to be an electrical engineer to figure out what happens when you put cardboard and Niagara Falls worth of water together. It didn't work. Right. It really didn't work. <laughs> so it turned out that the, all that water kind of tend to blow the pieces apart. Um, okay, back to the drawing board. <laughs> So we said, well, what's another big expensive machine that we could actually use? So we thought, all right, we'll, uh, we'll try this thing over here, uh, which is uh, it's a laser cutter. Uh, these are kind of cool devices. What they do is uh, use an invisible, invisible layer, about 60 watts, uh, and it'll cut through all sorts of different uh, materials. Uh, so we kind of set it up for that. And uh, here's an example of it actually kind of running, and it's actually cutting uh, the pieces in, in real time. So. Um, you know, go through and take all the files that we have and we just keep putting stacks of the cardboard on it uh, and it'll go through and, uh, and, and fabricate them with completely crisp and accurate detail. So uh, that was the main thing. From there, uh, we had a stack of cardboard pieces which uh, we were then able to assemble and uh, put together into one final piece. Which looked like that. That basically went from start to finish and uh, in a matter of hours. So, we we're happy. And that's it. I want to open this up for questions for Mark. I, you know, he's got his website there. If you go to his website, he shows step by step a number of projects that he's done along these lines. Any questions? Uh, how much weight? There's the real supported weight, and then there's on paper it's 2,200 pounds. But uh, you know, it's really not a problem uh, to, to kind of. I use it as a step stool and move everything else. So. <laughs> I was holding my breath through all of it. Yeah. So.